Hi, I'm David Andalfaro. I'm with the Research Division of the Federal Reserve Bank of St. Louis, and we're here at the 39th Annual Fall Policy Conference, and I have the pleasure of speaking with Ross Levine of the University of California, Berkeley. Uh, Ross will be speaking on a paper titled Competition and Bank Opacity. Thanks yes. for being here, Ross. Yes, good to be here. Would you mind telling us about your paper? Sure. What I want to investigate is what happens to the quality of information that banks disclose to the public and to regulators after regulators reduce impediments to competition among banks. So the general issue is if there's a regulatory change that allows banks to compete with each other, so one bank can enter another bank's market, does that have an effect on the quality of information that they disclose? Because Quality, can I clarify quality in the sense of the quality of their balance sheet, the, the information contained in their regular uh, statements? Required? So all, all firms, all mm -hmm. corporations, including banks, have income statements and balance statements where they in, describe how much profits they're making sure. and what their assets are. And they can do things with their accounts to make themselves look a little bit better or look a little bit worse. And so when we talk about information disclosure, it's the degree to which they're manipulating that information in order to perhaps pass muster with the regulators on capital requirements or in order to look a little bit better in terms of profits or they could even make themselves look a little bit worse if they want to discourage new entrants as a way to signal that the market's not very oh, profitable. Okay. okay, very good. So then um, this is, uh, what, what, what particular um, regulations do you have in mind here or deregulations? So the, we look over a particular period in the U.S starting in the mid-1970s and going through to about um, the 2000, when there was a series of regulatory reforms that reduced impediments. So for example, one type of reform um, re eliminated restrictions on banks being able to set up branches within their own state. So for a long time in the U.S. and in many states, the restrictions on how many banks, how many subsidiaries, how many branches a bank could actually have. And those were removed, and that meant if I was in one part of the state and you were in another part of the state, I could set up a branch and compete with you. And that was disallowed before by regulation. Then there were other regulatory changes. So for example, if I'm in California, you're in Missouri, and you want to open up a bank in California, for a long time in the U.S., for most of the 20th century, you couldn't do that. Okay. And these restrictions were removed. And there were a variety of other restrictions that slowly allowed banks to be able to compete with each other more vigorously. Okay, so, you know, regulations come, they mm -hmm. wax and they wane, yep. and, and there is there a presumption of what uh, additional competition or the lack thereof has in terms of uh, bank opacity? Yes, so mm -hmm. what's nice from a research perspective, and I think also from a policy perspective, is that it could go either way. For example, um, many people argue that competition improves efficiency. So if this bank is going to be under threat, then its investors, both you know, potentially bondholders and stockholders, are going to monitor that institution much more carefully and perhaps induce it to provide much more accurate information and not play around with the numbers. At the same time, if a bank or another firm is under threat, the insiders may see that their horizons are short and they may want to manipulate the information more intensively in order to get bonuses because the firm's long-term prognosis is not so great. So from a theoretical perspective, it could go either way. And this has implications for us today because it's about you know, what types of policies are going to make it easier for the private sector to assess what's going on in a bank and also for regulators. And so that's... So yours is largely uh, an empirical in investigation. Yes. And I, you take a look, there's a, 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 a broad class of theories that can go one way or the other. Exactly. And now you're, you're taking a look at some evidence. Exactly. What evidence in particular are you looking at? So what we do is we look at these regulatory changes that take place in different states over different times. And we see, we have measures of the degree to which the bank is manipulating its information mm -hmm. before there was a regulatory change, and then we see what happens afterwards. So give an example of a manipulating uh, evidence that you have of manipulation, how you can identify that in your data. So the way we would identify that is there are the, the accounting profession mm -hmm. has many models of trying to predict, trying to explain loan loss provisions. Mm -hmm. So what's a loan loss provision? 
Loan loss provision is when a bank takes aside some money and puts it into account and says, we're worried that some of our loans may not pay off and we want to have this money there just in case there's a problem. When the bank does that, it lowers its income in that period and it increases measures of capital. And so the bank can use that type of discretionary loan loss provisions. Maybe they don't really need to have loan loss provisions, but they do it anyway. Or maybe they want to boost their profits and look better to potential buyers. And in that way, they'll take money out of loan loss provisions. And that comes in through the income statement and looks like a profit. But how can you tell whether this loan loss provisioning is, is because of good well-intentioned or just for window dressing purposes? Exactly. So that's where there, there are two ways we do this. Yeah. So one way to do this is we have a statistical model, and this again comes from the accounting profession, and we predict everything with using all the information we can, what we expect loan loss provisions to be, okay. how much we think banks are going to put aside. Okay. And then we look at the difference between our prediction from a model and whatever's left over. And what we can do is we can see whether that amount of ignorance, that measure, does it change systematically before and after a bank faces competition? And the other way we do it is that banks also will restate their earnings. And what that means is they put together their loan loss provisions, they release this information to the public, income statements and balance sheets, and then sometimes a few quarters later, they'll go back and they'll say, oops, we're going to restate it. Okay. And so we also look at that because that's a very direct measure of whether the bank had been change, you know, had, had to change its um, accounts ex post afterwards. So restating uh, financial uh, reports is very common, but what you're trying, to, you're trying to discover whether this occurs more systematically under one regulatory regime vis-a-vis -vis another. Exactly. I guess. So we look at, say, we get measures of how much of this type of restatement is taking place before big change, how much is taking place after, or in the earlier measure where we have a statistical model and we assess how much of this manip manipulation seems to be taking place and does it change. And then what we find is that it's a very big change I and mean, yeah, it goes so down it, by about 40%. It goes down because of the, the remind me again, because, because of, of the in, Because of the, the regulations so, that permitted more competition exactly. in the United States. Exactly. Uh, these measures go down. So what happens so is the measures of competition go up. Right. So as regulators remove barriers to competition, I can come over to your neighborhood, you can come to California. What we see after that is both you and I, because we're subject to greater competition, we manipulate our earnings less. We restate our financial accounts uh, less frequently. And you, according to your estimated model of loan loss provisioning, you estimate that this, this kind of window dressing tool is used less frequently in a yes. more competitive regime. Exactly. So you, your, your empirics uh, lend support to, to one side of the theoretical debate exactly. that argue that increased competition promotes uh, transparency. Correct. I see. Um, do you have a, a view of, as to whether this is a, a good thing? Uh, is, uh, there are you know, cases that could be made mm -hmm. that, uh, uh, that some degree of opacity is kind of desirable in, yes. in, in some, uh, for example, uh, in fact, the Fed, for example, does not disclose the <laughs> yeah. identity of, say, the uh, agents who make use of the emergency lending fa facility, right. at least, or, or at least delay the disclosure. Yes. But, I mean, um, do, do, does your, do you have a view or does your analysis suggest anything about the, the de desirability of these types of increased competition yes. leading to greater transparency? So there's a long series of papers that examine the relationship between bank opacity or the degree to which banks manipulate their accounts, the degree to which there are restatements of their earnings, and bank performance. What I mean by bank performance is you'll see that banks tend to be less stable, more fragile when they manipulate their earnings more. And this exists in other firms as well. Mm -hmm. You also tend to see that lending becomes less efficient um, and much more subject to the vagaries of the business cycle when banks are more prone to manipulate their earnings or restate their uh, mm. financial accounts. And regulators also have a harder time following the banks when their financial accounts are not as accurate as, uh, as, as, they, as they could be. So there seem to be these implications for bank behavior 
of the degree to which banks manipulate their earnings. And so our contribution is to say, is to assess this question, well, this one type of policy change, increase or decrease competition, what was in its impact on the, on the bank? And hmm. it's, it's the degree to which it manipulates earnings. Hmm. That's interesting. You know, I, I, it comes, uh, I think, about cross-country comparisons. Perhaps. Mm -hmm. so let's, say, let's take a look at the Canadian banking system in particular, which I would probably most people would characterize as less competitive in the yes. United States. Yes. And yet, uh, it, it, it's widely known that it displayed much more resilience mm -hmm. uh, during the recent crisis, in particular. Yes. Uh, do you have any views on that? I mean, uh, so have you looked at other countries? Or so, in this particular study, I haven't looked at other okay. countries. Um, so, one of the nice things about looking at the U.S. states is that we can hold lots of other things constant. Because right. obviously, if you look at Canada and you look at the United States, the differences are going to, going to be much more substantial, sure. and you, it's hard to it's hard to um, isolate the effect of one thing like competition. Right. So sure, absolutely. So competition is good, good for transparency, is good. and transparency uh, largely provides more resilient, more accountable banking sector. Yep, and um, I think it's relevant for today yeah. because especially after the crisis with greater consolidation, perhaps a feeling of too big to fail on the part of investors and banks, this is tends to, <clears throat> this might be interpreted as an increased regime in which there's less competition. Right. And so what this sort of paper talks about is not just the history from the 70s and the 80s, but it also speaks to what's going on now in terms of regulatory policies that might infringe on competition and the contestability of markets. Very good, Ross. Uh, if you had to summarize, what's the, what's the takeaway of this paper, would you say, in two or three sentences, what would you say? I would say that competition tends to reduce lots of inefficiencies in banks, and we should be worried about policies and developments now that are going to reduce competition among banks. Very good. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.